China has reported 60,000 COVID-related deaths in just over a month, the first major death toll released since the country stopped its zero COVID policy. China has been widely accused of underreporting coronavirus deaths, despite evidence of hospitals and crematoriums being overrun. According to officials, China recorded 59,938 COVID-related deaths between the 8th of December and the 12th of January. Most of those who died were over 80, with most having underlying conditions. The figures include 5,503 deaths caused by respiratory failure directly due to the virus and 54,435 caused by underlying conditions combined with the virus. The real total is likely to be higher because which the figures refer only to deaths recorded at medical facilities. When Edison Davis and Augustine Nemes set out to fish from India's southern coast on the 27th of November, they promised their families they would be home for Christmas. Then, there was no word from them for weeks. The two men were part of a group of 15 fishermen who set sail in a deep-sea vessel for close to three weeks to fish in the Arabian Sea. Arabian sea. The men's families didn't panic at first. They were used to the fishermen spending days at sea. But when Christmas came and went and the men still hadn't returned home, the families began to fear the worst. The memory of Cyclone Aki, a powerful storm that struck India's southern coast in 2017 and killed dozens of fishermen, was fresh in their minds. When you arrive in China now the officials in head-to-toe protective clothing are gone. There are no buses with special plastic dividers waiting to take you to centralized quarantine. The main reminder that COVID is still around is that people are wearing masks. It feels weird. You still need a PCR test before flying and arriving passengers fill in a health declaration form, accessible via phone apps. This then generates a temporary QR code. You scan the code when you come through the airport and then, after clearing immigration, simply walk out and into China. As a journalist, I had to wait for an hour for special clearance to enter. During that time I and another waiting reporter had a long chat with one of the immigration police. It was the first day they didn't have to wear the da bai, big white, protective gear over their uniforms or face shields or shoe covers. Last week, when Indian origin lawyer Surendran K. Patel took the oath as a district judge in a U.S. court, 
he made headlines back home because of his inspiring journey. The Hindi's Imran Qureshi tells the story of a man who went from making hand-rolled cigarettes in India to becoming an arbiter of justice. Mr. Patel, 51, who is from the southern Indian state of Kerala, has been appointed a judge in the 240th Judicial District Court in Fort Bend County in Texas State. He was sworn in on the 1st of January, five years after he became a U.S. citizen. His journey, Mr. Paddle says, was all about hard work, determination and a lot of struggle. But there were also a lot of people who supported and helped me at every stage of my life, he says, saying that the list is topped by his mother, whom he calls a symbol of sacrifice.